Welcome to Inside Southeastern Football with Frank Selfo, presented by LA's First Choice Auto Auction on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. It's your chance to hear directly from the head of Lion Football. Now, live from Topola Catering in downtown Hammond, here's Alan Waddell. fans, your defending Southland Conference champions return to the court very soon. We are very excited about this season. Get your season tickets now. It's going to be a great year. Line up. Domestic violence and sexual assault is an issue affecting college campuses all across the country. Every student has the right to pursue an education free from violence. As a coach and leader of young men and women, I know I play a pivotal role in creating the culture our students live in. Here at Southeastern, we are committed to changing the culture. Sexual violence and physical abuse are never okay. The lines just don't stand by. We act. I am pledging to do my part. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am a solution, and I will set the expectation. All right, welcome back to Inside Southeastern Football with Coach Frank Selfo, presented by Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction and Topla on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. As uh, now time for welcome into the show, the head football coach of your Southeastern Lions, Coach Frank Selfo. And Coach, thanks for being here. It's hard to believe this is our, this is our final show of the year. Yeah, it is, Alan. And I want to, you know, I like to thank everybody that comes regularly to the shows. And, uh, you know, it's great to see a show of support out there. Uh, you know, for the Lion football program. But also I want to thank you. I mean, you do a heck of a job. You come up here and you, uh, you, you're very well prepared, but sometimes you got to wing it. And uh, <laughs> even when Robbie filled in for you, uh, we loved him. Yeah. But it, it just wasn't you. So I, I really appreciate you doing what you're doing. No man. problem. I appreciate being. let me be a part of this. And we are going to do something a little different tonight. Uh, tell, tell us about this. We have this football here if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. But Yeah. Yeah, you know, just for you know, for the people that come in regularly, anybody that comes in, uh, they'll get a raffle ticket. You don't have to pay for it; it's free. But we're gonna auction off, or raffle off a. Uh, so we'll pick a we'll pick a, a ticket at the end. Yeah, we'll pull a ticket, and then somebody will get a, a football signed by all the seniors from this season. There you go. So head, uh, co signed by Coach Selfo and all the seniors from this year, the 2018 senior class. As uh, if you're riding around right now, you want to come by and, and get a ticket. We certainly have a few left, and we can get you in. The drawing. Coach, when we last saw you, you were celebrating a big victory against McNeese State. You've had a week uh, of off week to almost two weeks now to prepare for uh, for Nickel State as the game will be Thursday night. But uh, talk about the bye week, you know, what took place and, and, and where you're at this, this past week. Yeah, so uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the staff prepared just like we were playing this past Saturday. We wanted to get two days of preparation in for each uh, emphasis day. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of last week, we uh, practiced just like we would if we were playing the game on Saturday. So we had a base downs day, had a third down day on Wednesday, and then red zone on Thursday. Friday, we got together and took our team pictures. So it was pretty good. Uh, uh, Colton did a great job for us getting everything organized. But then we went to the stadium and took our team pictures, and that's always a great day, you know, where guys get a chance to – but not only with the team as a unit, as a, as a, for one last time together, but also as position groups with the position coaches. And, you know, that's pretty good to see the camaraderie with those guys. And they, you know, take a good, 
uh, I guess, the serious picture, and then they take the goofy picture. And then Saturday, we started the week all over again. So Saturday was a Tuesday preparation practice for us. Sunday was a Wednesday preparation. Today was a Thursday preparation. Tomorrow, we'll go into a, what we call a modified Thursday preparation. And then on Wednesday, it'll be a Friday preparation, and we'll play the game on Thursday, which we look at as a Saturday. So you got all that? <laughs> That's listening right there. I know. You know, you, you would think uh, the, the guys just do such a great job of handling it because we tell them, what, here's, here's what we got today. Here's the emphasis. Here's how we're going to go. But it allows us to get base downs in, third downs, and red zones, and then also give us a day for corrections, extra reps, uh, special teams emphasis, things like that. Coach, talk about your team uh, coming off a big victory against McNeese State. You have the bye week now. Is there a little maybe extra bounce in our step as we have one game left here to finish this thing off? You know, Alan, I'll, I'll say this about this group they have played hard and they've practiced well all year long i think they truly love football we've uh we put some things in during the course of the season that uh kind of gets them going at times but they they do you know the music's playing out there i know coach mcgee comes out there we play all of his favorite songs and uh he he, he gets them going but you know our guys truly like competing we have competition periods during the course of practice segments every day and uh you know our guys compete we keep score and uh, if the sun's out, one side of the stadium has more sun than the other. So on hot days, those losers got to go to the other side of the stadium. So that we're competing for something at all times. We're never just going out there for practice. And for us, practice is everything. So, uh, you know, during the course of this thing, you know, through the Magnese game, we had great preparation. We had great concentration. I thought our guys did a good job. It showed up on game day. And I think we've had the same from a preparation standpoint getting ready for this game. So I'm looking forward to see how it comes out on Thursday. Certainly this game every year is a, is a big one between Southeastern and Nichols State as uh, Nichols' program has improved vastly over the last few years. So certainly uh, it's become even more competitive uh, over the last few years. I mentioned in the Open this game has come down to the final play three consecutive years in a row. So uh, it's always a, a hard-fought football game. It's going to be on a Thursday night. Obviously, we don't have a game to talk about this week because it was a bye week last week, so we're going to spend a lot of time on the Colonels. Uh, before we get into those guys later on in the show, I do want to ask you, uh, your, your thoughts on Thursday night games? I mean, do you like them? How, how, how do you like about that? I do. You know, and, and kind of getting a model playing in, uh, you know, in, in the NFL, we played Thursday night games. And uh, so it was good. Like for us, playing the Monroe game on Thursday – Gave us a couple of games at the beginning of the season to, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't say recover, but more preparation for the second game of the season, which was LSU. Uh, for this one, the bye week fell at this time. So pushing this game back to Thursday, we didn't need the two full weeks. We just used the 10 days and then got it to play on Thursday. Also, you know, when you look at that and then the forward thinking, when I got with Coach Rebo at the beginning of the season, we moved this game to Thursday. We looked at it as a chance to go to the playoffs. We looked at it as a chance to play in a championship game, and whoever's going to win this game is going to have an opportunity to go to the playoffs. And you'd like those Friday, Saturday, those couple of days to uh, recuperate Almost a little like bit a and body. get prepared. Yeah, and get prepared for the first round of the playoffs. And uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be there, but that's the pattern. That's our vision. That's where we want to go. We want to play it on Thursday night, so we have those extra couple of days. Uh, win the conference championship and go on to the playoffs. So, y'all have talked about it. this. Is something that that will stay for the immediate future? Well, we'll see. You know, we'll see how it goes. You know, that uh, uh, whether they want to or not, I would love to because I plan on being in the champ, playing for the championship, and then uh, getting ready for the playoffs the following week. And I want those extra couple of days. Uh, preparing for another opponent that somebody we hadn't seen all year long from a different part of the country could help us in travel. Uh, we might be having them come to our place. I don't know. But, you know, th that's I think that's the forward thing that we got to have that when we start bringing in recruits and telling them where we want to go and what our vision is. That's what it is. Certainly, uh, Thursday night game also gives you an opportunity for a little more exposure. You know, you're one of the only games on the docket that night. So everybody really for the conference, and a lot of the uh, – and we're going to talk more about the Southland Conference and the way this thing is shook out here going into the final week of the season. But I'm sure a lot of uh, – will be on this game certainly on Thursday night but then you don't have high school games on Thursday night yet right. it was on Friday so you're really the you're, you're the main event there on a Thursday night I know last year it was a great atmosphere here in Hammond I'm, we're expecting that same thing down there in Thibodeau this week I would think so you know they, they want to win the uh, claim a share of the crown or win the crown I guess because they beat UIW early in the season but I know that Obviously, all Lion fans will be pulling for us, and I'm sure all of the UIW fans will be pulling for us also. And uh, but, but I do. We expect a great atmosphere. Thibodeau's a great city. Uh, they do a good job. They're going to promote their program. And uh, I know they'll be well coached. Uh, Timmy does a good job. He's in his fourth season there. He's got in place what he wants from a building block standpoint. 
you know, we talked earlier today, they had 11 preseason all-conference players on the first team, which was by far more than anybody else in the conference, and all 11 of those guys from South Louisiana. So he's grown this team up in what he wanted to grow them up as. He's, his, the vision that he had four years ago when he took that job is coming to fruition for him and an opportunity to win the conference this year. Certainly going to be a big one on Thursday night as our Lions are going to take on Nickel State. We're going to spend a majority of our show here tonight talking about that game and getting you ready for a big one as the season wraps up on Thursday night over down, I mean, down there in Thibodeau for the Riverbell Classic. Coach, I know you spent uh, a lot of times, a lot of your years in college football. You've also used some, I mean, a lot of your years in the NFL as well. Uh, something about college football in these rivalry games. So I think it just makes um, it it's a little more special. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You know, the, the NFL is corporate, so they're, they're, they're rivalry games, but they're just mean. There's some mean things that go on. College is just so much more spirited from the standpoint of the passion involved, the communities, the cities involved, all those things. And, uh, you know, we played at Arizona, Arizona State. I mean, that was a huge deal for us when we played that game. And, and being able to go back and forth in both of those stadiums, you see the passion involved. Same thing here. You know, we could, I could tell last week against McNeese how, uh, uh, how it got to be a rivalry game. And I'm looking forward to this one from the same standpoint. I think if you if you would ask a lot of the the fans, uh, especially the the fans that are more new fans to Southeastern since football has returned, I think a lot of times the the McNeese game gets highlighted. But if you talk to those guys that played before before football went away, they all circle this one and say Nichols is the big one on the schedule. Let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we're going to have more right here on Inside Southeastern Football with Coach Frank Selfo presented by Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction and Topla on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. <laughs> as 13 schools get together for a retreat. Before we start another season of competition, there's time to have some fun and bond. We also share experiences of serving our campuses and communities. Together, Southland student athletes completed more than 30,000 community service hours over the past year. We pull for each other and push to make each other better. Just part of what makes us Southland strong. Label me. You know you want to. Don't be shy. You do it behind my back. So say it to my face. face. You don't know me. You know what I am? I'm a pitcher. I'm a striker. I'm a point guard. I'm a linebacker. I'm a setter. Shortstop. High jumper. Wrestler. Defender. Goalie. Student. Student athletes. That's who we are. We're ready for another exciting year of women's basketball. Get your season tickets now and line up. All right, welcome back to Inside Southeastern Football with head coach Frank Selfo, presented by Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction and Topla on Southeastern Sports Radio. Go ahead, you tap hey, it. Yeah, let me ask you something. Let's, let's take a poll in here who the biggest rivalry would be would be McNeese or Nichols State. How about that by a show of uh, maybe a, an applause? How about if we do that? Okay. All right, so if, if you think, if you, if y'all, if, who, who in the, the house thinks that this one is the biggest rivalry game for Southeastern? All right. 
What about uh, what about La about McNeese State? I think Nichols got it. Nichols got it. Yeah, Nichols, yeah, I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah, I'm telling I know. You, I know. The, the people that well, look, look. When you play for a trophy, that means something. We're not, we didn't play for anything in McNeese except you know it was the game, obviously. But they made a trophy. If there's a trophy game, if there's something going on, if you had, there's a rivalry that taking place that goes back a, a long ways. I know Cameron Barr and Dicky Whitson and those guys put that thing together for the River Bell Trophy, and it's pretty awesome to see our name on there a lot of times. So I want to keep it like that. Yeah, certainly. Lions have. Uh, Done well in this series over the last few years, and uh, certainly a big one coming up on Thursday night against the Colonels. The game is on Thursday night. It will be televised on Cox Sports Television or also on ESPN3 if you're outside of the viewing area. But we certainly want to get you there. You know, you, it's, it's going to be it's going to be a little chilly though, Coach. I think uh, the the I looked earlier the forecast at kickoff is supposed to be 39 degrees, so awesome. it's going to be it's going to be a little chilly down there in Thibodeau. But that's that's can't, football. You know, I always wait, say this man. every you know every year I color, cover football, I always feel like it, it doesn't really turn into football season until the time changes and when you show up at the game and it's dark you know it's, yeah. it's dark at five o'clock I, I just i just love this time of the year well the lions won't flinch in the weather i promise you that we'll go out there and play hard and give it all we got coach let's talk about the uh, the southland conference for a minute and kind of let everyone know you know where the standings are and whatever this thing's going to shake out and i know this is really your first time going through this league and first general thoughts on the league now that you've played just about everybody minus nickel state and Stephen f austin who we missed on the schedule this year yeah i, I Pretty much I was lied to about the, the quality of the league. Uh, <laughs> there's some good teams top to bottom, Alan. I think every week uh, people had an opportunity to win or lose a game. And uh, sometimes it was the breaks that you, you made yourself or uh, the opportunities that you missed out on when the opponent gave you a break or gave you an opportunity to take advantage of it. So I, I just think that, you know, when you look at UIW at the top and Abilene Christian right there behind them and the games that took place this past weekend. I went Northwestern, hadn't beat McNeese in, what, 15, 16 years. Yep. UIW's never won a championship. Uh, and y'all were talking earlier today, I think they won more games this year maybe than they have in the entire history of the conference, them in the conference. Uh, Abilene Christian beating Sam Houston, that's never happened before. Uh, Nickel State has a chance to win the conference. So, I mean, uh, the, the things that have taken place top to bottom have made this a com very competitive conference when you look at, uh, you know, teams having an opportunity to win uh, week in and week out. There, there's no – you don't just walk out there and throw your helmet and say, all right, we're going to win these three and we've got to play hard in these four or five games. You've got to win every week. You've got to bring it every week. You can't make mistakes because I think the coaching's too good. I think the talent level's a lot better than what uh, uh, I guess I was led on to believe by – by people, I don't know. It, I tell you, this year. You tell me. I mean, you got a history of it. You know it it's better been, than I it's do been, for sure. It's been more competitive, and it's been different. I, I don't know if I can ever remember a multiple loss champion since I've been associated with this. I wow. mean, usually it's either been an undefeated team or a one loss team. I mean, I think that maybe maybe a few years ago, and, and I'll try to look this up where where there was a couple of loss team, but um, it, it's certainly been different. And this year it's so unique as well because the way the league is broke down, you have an odd number of teams. Everybody doesn't play nine games. And I know the conference kind of got in a little bit of a sticky situation with this Incarnate Word situation because for those that don't know, Incarnate Word is only playing eight conference games where everyone else in the league is playing nine that's not their fault that's just the way the schedule fell so the question was is if nickel state is seven and two and incarnate word is six and two you know how does it work out but they're going to say they're both conference champs if that happens because they're going to go by the loss column not by the win column in that situation i, I don't know if i've ever seen that situation in the conference because I, I have I haven't teams. no i hadn't, hadn't been there when guys play an unequal number but look, we got a chance to uh just clear that up. Yeah, right? yeah no we can doubt. clear that part up. So that's the plan right there. No doubt about it. Just a unique thing. And I know that I know that there's been some talk on the table about going back to, to eight conference games. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. It's you know it's going back and forth. I think you're always looking to make yourself make your conference stronger. You know, McNeese uh, had a really great year last year and got left out. And the uh, what we were told was that the selection committee kind of felt like some of the schedule was not quite strong enough in certain areas. And and you know so we're looking at ways to strengthen our schedule. Uh, and then maybe go out nationally and go play some other schools and, and say, look, we do belong in that picture. We, do, we need to have multiple teams out of our conference. Three, maybe, you know, even three teams or four teams. But as, as uh, you know, like you said, there's, there needs to be – there's not a dominant team this year, but there needs to be uh, the recognition that our conference is a tough conference to play in. And, but for us to prove that, we've got to go out and play – you know, maybe some other one double A conference FCS schools in uh, around the country, and it's tough sometimes. It's tough to get games from a travel standpoint, logistically, all those things. So, 
Uh, for us, we played uh, Monroe and LSU this year, two FPS teams. Monroe's got a chance to win their conference. They're leading the division over there uh, in the Sun Belt. LSU obviously is having a great season at, at uh, ranked 10th in the country. So, you know, we play two really good teams that uh, had we had beaten one of those two, it would have elevated us from that standpoint. But, you know, going out and playing other FCS conferences, I think, would give our conference more credibility Would we, uh, should we win those games. One thing I thought that, that was interesting that you said at your press conference today and, and just how tight this thing is, as you look at the, the Southland Conference the way it is, is you have three teams four and four, three teams five and three, and two teams six and two right now. But like you said earlier, you know, if we go to San Antonio, we jump out to that 14-3 lead against Incarnate Word, if we, you know, win that football game, we're playing for a conference championship this weekend That's because right. Incarnate Word would have three losses and we'd be playing, you know, to knock Nichols down to the three losses. And there might, then it would be a total mess. There'd be all kind of teams. So that just shows yeah. you, you know, one or two plays the way this thing worked yeah, out. Yeah, it was one game this year, and then, uh, we're in the midst of the whole thing. And, you know, UCA getting knocked off and, uh, I, you know, Sam Houston losing, McNeese, all of those things taking place. But if we do what we need to do, we can't. You know, sometimes you got to fly this thing with blinders on. And all we had to do, not, and I shouldn't say all we had to do because we're talking about the conference champion here, is, but, but we needed to go into San Antonio and take care of business and do things that we felt like we were capable of doing, and we would be playing for the conference championship. So our approach this week is to approach it that way, that we do belong in that, that conversation, we do belong in that picture, and we're going to get there. All right, well, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to dive more into the Nickel State Colonels. We'll give you the scouting report on those guys as the Lions will finish up their season on Thursday night. Also coming up later in the show, we're going to do our drawing for all those that are in attendance for assigned football by the 2018 Southeastern Football Senior Class and also Coach Selfo. Right here on Inside Southeastern Football with Coach Frank Selfo, presented by Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction and Topla on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for providing the facilities to meet my health and nutritional needs in order for me to be the best student athlete I can be. For making game day experiences go from ordinary to extraordinary. For allowing me to meet new people and build lifelong friendships while competing at the school I love. For giving me the resources to pursue my degree and the ability to excel in the classroom. For helping me look my best as I compete and achieve my goals. Thank, Thank you. you. Line fans, your defending Southland Conference champions return to the court very soon. We are very excited about this season. Get your season tickets now. It's going to be a great year. Line up. Across divisions, sports, championships, and schools for nearly half a million student athletes. College sports create lifelong opportunity, and that starts with education. We've raised the academic bar, so more are earning degrees creating healthier campuses by working with the nation's brightest minds and making sure more have the chance to succeed and are supported on their journey. But beyond the numbers, it's about opportunity, and we're working to provide it for every student athlete.
All right, welcome back. Almost halfway home here on the season finale of Inside Southeastern Football with head coach Frank Selfa. We've been doing this each and every Monday night. And as always, our show is presented by Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction and obviously our host site, Topla, on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. I want to thank these guys for being great to us all year long, no doubt about it. As it's now turned to turn our attention... Coach of the Nickel State Colonels, your opponent for this weekend, and certainly a big game on the docket. But, you know, we've been talking a little bit about the rivalry and, and all that, but we haven't really talked about the football team. And they have a good team. Uh, they started yeah. out this year with a big victory against a Power 5 opponent beating Kansas on the road. Uh, they had a couple of setbacks against McNeese State and Abilene Christian. But other than that, these last few weeks, they've been on a roll putting up a lot of points and playing good defense. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of teams have had setbacks against those two guys, right? Yep. Uh, I think winning the Kansas game was huge for that program. Uh, it gave them a lot of confidence to be able to play. Feel like they can play against anybody, which is really cool. Uh, anytime you're building a program, which is what Tim's doing. Uh, so when you look at what they've done throughout the course of the conference season, they're number one in the, in the uh, conference on defense, uh, rush defense and total defense. It's, I think they're second in pass defense. So they're very good. These are guys that uh, – He's gone out and recruited and grew them up for the last three or four years. they got their junior and senior football team, uh, and they've got some depth behind those guys. But I think their front seven guys are probably, besides the LSU game, and we studied them a lot because we've had some extra time. Besides, uh, you know, LSU, I think they've got uh, the best front seven guys that we've seen all year from an athletic standpoint, but even more than that from uh, the, the way they play their intensity level. So we have got to match that. Obviously, they're going to come out. Uh, smoking at the beginning of the game, we withstand that. And uh, no telling how those things go early on. You withstand that, and then now you kind of get into your game plan. But uh, those guys are really good up front. Since you're starting on defense, we'll kind of start there. And, and you mentioned it. They have a very good uh, defensive front. Uh, they're leading the Southland Conference in sacks. They have 40 sacks on the season. They had five last week against Stephen F. Austin. And certainly, if we're going to be productive, it starts up front and be able to protect. Yeah, and, and we got to do a better job of that. I'm, and I shouldn't say we did a better job of that against McNeese, and we, but we got to continue to do a good job. We've had, Like I said, we've had some good practices. But even at that – where they really are effective is getting you outside the chains. They also lead the conference in tackles for losses. So uh, they're, they're 55 for them. Lash is uh, set a school record for tackles for losses. He leads the conference by a long ways in tackles for losses. So he's a guy we got to keep out of the backfield. He's probably the catalyst for them on defense, the way he plays, uh, how much energy he plays with, and how athletic he is. He's from, I think he's from Riverside maybe, or Lutcher. He's from Lutcher. Lutcher, yeah. Uh, down on the bayou. So he's a guy that, uh, you know, grew up about uh, being passionate about football, and it definitely carries over to him on the football field. Coach, you talk about, let's flip to the offensive side of the football, and really it all starts with, with Chase Forcade. Uh, this will be the third time we, we've seen Chase Forcade here in Hammond, and uh, he's had a nice career there at Nichols, and uh, it starts with him. And I know the last few weeks they've been running him a lot more. Uh, I know he can throw the football and he'll take shots down the field, but they are, have been getting the running back, uh, I'm sorry, the, the quarterback run game going the last few weeks. Yeah, and you've seen a lot more offense offensive production because of that. I think it opens up some things. People aren't uh, playing as much coverage against them. Their two wideouts on the outside do a really good job. They're athletic, uh, got good speed, go up and get the football. And what, what there's been a tendency maybe to double some of those guys and empty out the box. Do you see the adjustments being made uh, in the last few weeks? I think ACU did some of that stuff. McNeese definitely. But what you've seen now is that uh, Nichols changing a little bit more from taking shots down the field and double coverage to him running the football, having more of a quarterback presence uh, in the run game. And because of that, he's athletic. And we talked about it earlier today. He's a, he's a fiery player. He's a product He's uh, similar to his dad was. Uh, I remember his dad when he was playing high school football at Shaw, and he was just a fiery guy, great competitor. Uh, and, you know, we got to account for him at all times. We've, we've struggled. Uh, uh, you know, we talked about it. We've struggled against athletic quarterbacks who could tuck it and take off sometimes. And uh, he's a guy that we've had to really prepare for this week. I think on last week's show when we had a chance to, to visit with uh, Coach Chuf Ch Ch Chofi, the defensive yeah. coordinator here for Southeastern, uh, I thought it was unique when he said, you know, the thing I'm having to get a grasp of is that quarterback just keeps running. And, yeah. uh, you know, at the college level, uh, you know, what adjustments are being made to it to affect that? Well, you know, you got to maintain the, the rush lanes by those defensive linemen. It's the big thing, you know. And you can't get out of control. If you got a high rush, contained rush, you got to stay in that. Sometimes you feel like, well, I got a chance to beat him underneath. But if you do that and he's able to get outside, which happened, and the one that really comes to mind against UIW, that happened. And it gave up a big play right before the half. So, you know, it's, it's maintaining 
in those rush lanes and then the pressures that you bring, you got to make sure those guys understand that when we bring those pressures, everybody's got to be gap sound. If we do that, we'll be fine. And we've done that a couple of times. We've, we've done well against some guys this year, but there's – when guys have gotten out of the pocket and taken off, uh, it's created some problems for us. So we got to make sure those guys stay in the pocket. I think our secondary does a nice job from a coverage standpoint. Stay in the pocket, force them to throw the football, and let's see what happens from there. Is, um, is on the outside, is it, is it taking shots down the field? Is it an intermediate passing game? What are they trying to do? He will. They'll, they'll take the shots down the field. I think they're, they've got a quick passing game that they do throw, I think, similar to a lot of people. They throw a lot of bubbles and quicks and things like that, but they do – they have the personnel to take shots down the field, similar to Northwestern. You know, I thought yep. that Northwestern's uh, receivers were probably as good as anybody from an outside standpoint, being able to go take the top off. These two kids do the same thing for them. And for, for us to be able to match up with them, we got to either get to the quarterback or we got to play a little coverage. So if we get to the quarterback, we can't allow him out. If we play some coverage, we can't allow them to sneak through in the run game. So it's a, they, it's a unique opportunity for us to be able to show how much we've grown throughout the course of the season playing against uh, mobile quarterbacks. Let's give you some serious history in this one as uh, this will be the 28th meeting. Uh, Lions lead it 14-13, to all-time meetings against wow. Nichols State. Uh, in Hammond, Lions lead it 7-5. to Down in Thibodeau, Nichols, lead, Nichols leads it 7-5. to I think we've won the last couple, though. I'll try to look that up here while we're at the next commercial break. Last meeting uh, a year ago, Lions Lions win 21-17 in Hammond uh, to finish off the season for the Riverbell Classic. I mentioned it. Lions have won six out of the last seven in this matchup and uh, certainly looking to make it seven out of eight this Thursday night. And I know we've talked about this every time we talked about when we played Northwestern and we played McNeese State. You're going against these guys on kids. And, I, and you just mentioned a lot of names um, that, are, that, are, that are starring for those guys that are playing good football that are, you know, from Lutcher, that are from Rummel, that are from De La Salle. You know, I mean, a lot of those, those programs out in the New Orleans area that you're going in there and trying, to, and trying to beat those guys on some kids. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's what we talked about against McNeese. We're head-to-head -head on these guys. Um, we ask players who's recruiting you. It's you guys, Nichols, McNeese. You guys, Nichols, McNeese, Northwestern. So, you know, that whole process and, and who knows what, to, what, what a player makes a decision on. If he's at the game and we play well and we beat McNeese like we did and they go, I want to come to Southeast. And if we go down to Thibodeau and same thing happens, we've got a chance to swing a kid there. So, you know, what I'm hoping is that we play the best that we can play. Nichols plays the best that we can they can play. And at the end of the game, we come out on top. And those kids choose to come to Southeast. And we got to show them that what we've got is a better product and a better future for them from a visionary standpoint. And if we do that, uh, we'll get the guys we're supposed to get and we'll start off locally and then branch out from there, Alan. Lions and the Colonels. Uh, we'll get after it this Thursday night. Just got word. Lions have won the last three trips down to Thibodeau. So uh, we've had success playing in that stadium. Nichols coming into this game ranked uh, 15th in one of the polls, 18th in the other. And they're looking for an outright uh, Southland Conference crown as they would get the auto bid with a head-to-head -head win over Incarnate Word earlier this year if they were able to win the game. We're trying to knock that out as the Lions look to play a great game this Thursday night. Again, 6 o'clock kickoff in Thibodeau. Let's take a break. We come back. We're going to have more right here on Inside Southeastern Football with Frank Selfo presented – by Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction and Topla on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. We're ready for another exciting year of women's basketball. Get your season tickets now and line up. Domestic violence and sexual assault is an issue affecting college campuses all across the country. Every student has the right to pursue an education free from violence. As a coach and leader of young men and women, I know I play a pivotal role in creating the culture our students live in. 
Here at Southeastern, we are committed to changing the culture. Sexual violence and physical abuse are never okay. Lines just don't stand by. We act. I am pledging to do my part. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am the solution. And I will set the expectation. Label me. You know you want to. Don't be shy. You do it behind my back. So say it to my face. face. You don't know me. You know what I am? I'm a pitcher. I'm a striker. I'm a point guard. I'm a linebacker. I'm a setter. Shortstop. High jumper. Wrestler. Defender. Goalie. Student. Student athletes. That's who we are. Show here in 2018. We're preparing you for the season finale as the Lions will take on Nickel State on Thursday night, 6 o'clock kickoff. Down in Thibodeau. Game will be televised on CST. It's going to be a little chilly down there, but wrap up. Come down to Thibodeau, watch a good football game uh, to wrap up the season here for Southeastern. Also, if you're just joining us at the end of our program, coming up probably in about 10 or 15 minutes, we're going to draw and give away a, a football that Coach Selfo has brought. It's signed by all the seniors uh, here for Southeastern and also himself, uh, the Lion football team this year. So all you got to do is be in attendance and you are in the drawing. Coach, this is – yeah, yeah, you know, we got a couple of uh, uh, student buses that head down there. Yeah. So it's free of charge. They go on. There's food, beverage. They got a tailgate party when they get down there in Thibodeau. Uh, transportation back and forth, food, beverage. Don't get it better it's than all that, free of it? charge. Yeah, I mean, I can't – you know, what are you going to do uh, on a Thursday night? You're not studying. So j jump on board the bus and let's go, man. No doubt about it. We need you there loud and proud as the Lions are going to invade Thibodeau and try to recapture the uh, the Riverbell Classic. Coach, uh, I thought we'd do something a little bit different since we didn't have a game uh, to break down from last week. As this is our final show, and I don't want to talk about the, the season like it's over because it's not. We have a big game on Thursday night. But we I want to get you to kind of reflect a little bit maybe back on, on the season as, uh, as where your team has come uh, to, to where we are now in, in your first year, so year here in Hammond. Uh, you, you know, I, I guess it's – it, sometimes it's difficult to look back while you're still in the midst of everything because you're, you're constantly looking forward. Uh, uh, what we tried to do at the beginning, our, our whole plan was to grow, this, pro grow uh, this program this season to be constantly better each week, to just play better each week and, and not, not, not jump up and then fall straight back down. And we had some dips in there. Uh, we did some things well. You know, we, we had some production offensively. We played well defensively. Uh, uh, we had some good games. We had some uh, partially good games. I think our special teams played well, and then we had that dip last week against McNeese, but we didn't uh, complete breakdown. So I think there were some, some good times during the course of the season where we had a lot of hope for the future, and we still do. Uh, but the outcome of the game didn't quite match what we wanted. You know, we didn't get we didn't get the results from wins and losses. But I thought we made a lot of progress uh, on our football team, and then putting things in place for next season and those beyond. And that's important, Alan. I don't I don't I don't think you come in and say, well, this is what we're going to do, and then if it's not done in six weeks and it's a complete washout, it's not. We're going to stay the course. We've got a good plan in place. Uh, we got to recruit. We got to develop, and I think that's a big thing: is is evaluating the players that you want that fit what you want. Then you recruit them, but then you have to develop them. You can't just go get them and expect them to be ready made, and then they come in and they play because that's uh, you're going to end up with a 50-50 football team. So you got to go out and you got to find them. You got to identify them. Then you recruit them. Then you develop those guys. And then now you grow those guys now in the locker room as they grow to be freshmen and sophomores and juniors. And you look across our conference, it's like that. Uh, when you look at that, those, those juniors and seniors are telling those freshmen how things are. So you don't have to develop a culture. The players develop a culture. That locker room is run by the players. No matter what anybody says at any level, the players run the locker room. The coaches don't dictate the locker room because that's a sanctuary for those kids. And when they get in there, they run the locker room. So if you want a certain message, those players have to grow up believing in that message. And I think we've made really great progress towards that. Uh, from during that process for what I want and what I see in this program. Coach, any, any guys stick out as far as, you know, when you first got here to where we are now? Maybe, maybe most improved, maybe guys that have, you know, has, have improved during the season uh, or, or even during the offseason from wherever you first got out here. Yeah, you know, I, I think our offensive line has taken some strides, you know, uh, coming off the football and doing some things there. I think our receivers crew 
you know, we had we didn't have a guy catch more than 11 balls last season. We have nine guys with more than 11 balls this year right now. So we didn't have one one guy catch more than 11 balls coming back. Uh, you know, Jawan had two catches the entire season. So we've got 11. I mean, we've got nine guys right now with 11 more catches. And, uh, you know, because of that, I think that group there, along with our offensive line, has really done a good job. Jason Virgil was a unknown quantity. Uh, went through spring, competed for the job throughout the summer, won a job in camp, and, you know, really developed into a good quarterback. And then you look at Lorenzo Nunes that competed for that job, didn't win it, and came to us and says, look, I want to help this team win. Tell me what I need to do. Well, when you have that on your football team, man, you got some unselfishness that's taking place instead of those guys that say, uh, this is what I play, and I, if I don't play here, and then I'm going to leave, I'm going to transfer. You see that so often. But for him to be able to do that and step up and say, I want to get on the field, I want to do the best that I can do to help our help this program win. I think is just such a cool deal. Defensively, you know, losing Matt Wright early in the season definitely hurt us. He's, uh, you know, he was the catalyst for us back there. But the other guys, how's his recovery, by the way? Uh, well, he's he's got another surgery coming up right after Thanksgiving, probably. So we'll see how that goes. And then, uh, but you know, Braylon Thorne just stepped up. He didn't play hard. You know, he played, he's played last well. month. Yeah, he's played well. Trey Spann didn't take any snaps last. You know, he's playing well. Philando Jordan didn't play last year. He's playing well. Dejon Lynch didn't play. You know, you look at our secondary. They've done a good job. They've done a nice job. To Marcus Russell, I think he's second in the conference in tackles. Very few snaps last year. Kyle Nevels didn't play hardly at all last year. And he's right there doing a good job from a leadership standpoint. And then Isaac Bergman didn't. You know, again, a guy that not much experience but has really – you've seen his growth. I think everybody looked at him from the LSU game and said, wow. Well, he said he got a couple of dips in there because he hadn't played. But you've seen a consistency from him as the season has gone on. You've seen some things take care – from uh, from that standpoint from him that it, you he's look at him and go, He's still a young player as well. Oh, he's a soft – yeah, he's got a, still got another season, uh, two years left. And then John Miller – I think John Miller is a guy that um, often overlooked for us up front, just that tough, hard-nosed kid that's a no-nonsense guy that comes to work every day with a hard hat and uh, does a great job. We, we got a lot of guys, man. There's a lot of stories that, of guys, of things that have taken place uh, during the course of the year. How about Juice Marcelin, you know, not playing, uh, being injured, just couldn't quite get over the hump and then comes in and, you know, has a couple of good games for us and, does some things, you know, just does a great job. Branch and Swable catching, like, like he told me the other day, he said, I caught more balls this year and I've caught my whole career, you know. So, you know, you know it just, you, you write stories and, and sometimes people forget the individuals that are involved in these stories when you look at those individual players. And I know I've, I've left out some guys, but uh, you look back at those individual players and you go see how this game has touched their lives and what they've been able to do and their outlook has changed and what they've been able to do academically and how their grades have evolved and how they're getting better and they're showing up in study hall and they're going to Miss Bentley's class and doing those things. And, you know, so they're, they're, I, I, we made a lot of progress, Alan. Sometimes it doesn't always show up in, in terms of wins and losses, and obviously that's what I'm, I'll be judged by. But I know that we're in the right direction because of what's taking place. I know, again, you have another game. The season's not over. We certainly have a big game on Thursday. Yeah. Night, but anything, anything you do different? Uh, as I look back, no. You know, I mean, uh, uh, play harder, try not to fumble as much, <laughs> not turn it over, not give up touchdowns uh, on offense. Uh, you know, I, I, you're always, at the end of the season, we'll go back and look, and we'll look at all of our itineraries. We'll look at all of our travel plans. We'll look at all of our practice schedules and say, did we do enough? Uh, did we do too much? Did we wear them down towards the middle of the season? Maybe, maybe we were practicing. Maybe we were too physical during the course of the season, and the body's just worn down a little bit. And you know, so you got to go back and look at all those things. You take notes. Uh, we have a staff meeting every day where I talk to the staff about look, write stuff down. So at the end of the season, if we don't make the adjustment at the end of the season, there might be a pattern taking place. So. Uh, as of right now, no. I mean, uh, yeah, I wanted to win every game. So we didn't win every game. But I also know there's a process that goes into winning each one of these games. So we'll take a look at that. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to draw for the football. We'll have some questions, and we'll wrap it up here on the season finale of Inside Southeastern Football with Frank Selfo, presented by Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction and Topla on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. Each summer, student-athlete leaders from the Southland Conference's 13 schools get together for a retreat. Before we start another season of competition, there's time to have some fun and bond. We also share experiences of serving our campuses and communities. Together, Southland student-athletes completed more than 30,000 community service hours over the past year. 
we pull for each other and push to make each other better. Just part of what makes us Southland strong. Imagine life without football. No Friday night lights, no pep rallies, no band. All that time invested to teach young men and women commitment and team spirit, gone. Football, where young men and women compete to be the best. Where bands, cheerleaders, and countless others take part in the team experience. Celebrate the passion that only happens every fall. Join the game. All right, welcome back. We have about 10 minutes to go here on our show. Again, it's the season finale of Inside Southeastern Football with Frank Selfo, as always, presented by the Weekend of First Choice Auto Auction and Topla right here on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. Want to go ahead and draw for our ball here? Oh, that would be awesome. Let's go ahead and draw man. for Let's the ball before we get to our questions, and we'll talk Let's a little bit more that. about Nichols' game. And uh, You hear the drum roll? They got a drum roll. This is <laughs> awesome. All right, pick one out. Let's go. Here we go. What we got? Seven seven one one seven seven zero. Who's the winner? Who we got it? Somebody in here's got to have it. We got awesome. it right there. Come right get there. it. Yeah. All right. We got the winner. Absolutely. I trust you. No, it's a souvenir. There you go. Nice. Congratulations. You go. All right. That's awesome. Appreciate you doing that, Coach, having that ball here for today. We want to thank everybody who came out each and every Monday night yeah. to enjoy dinner and the show with us as we talk Lion football as the season. You, you know as well as I do, we don't operate without these people. Oh, I mean, no, this it, is awesome. Just, yeah, we, don't, we can't operate. And it's, a lot of uh, our faces come every week, and they're, they're a part of yeah, our show, and we yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, it's pretty that. cool. It's kind of the, you've got a family of people that come here, and it's pretty uh, – it's neat to see them. And when they miss, I kind of get upset sometimes. But I know most of they come most of the time. And, and, you know, on our last show, we also have to do some thank yous. We certainly want to thank Topla for being our host every week. You know, yeah. We're back here at Topla Catering this year, and certainly we're happy for them. And they do the lunch menu for us. And I know that Topla, the restaurant, is certainly kind to you and your staff as well. Yeah, and then, you know, we come over here for our, all of our home pregame meals. We eat here. We eat here in the same room, and uh, they set it up. It's a little different configuration, but the food is fantastic. Our players love it. Uh, they do such a fantastic job. And, you know, you can't yeah, – I mean – all the people there from management on down do just do an unbelievable job and they take care of the staff when they come in here uh it's a it's a place we frequent i i don't know if i'm i can sell it or not i get i get told i can't so i guess i won't but they do a heck of a job for us <laughs> we also want to thank Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction for being our title sponsor as well. Mr. John Petit does a great job. He's a, certainly a proud Lions supporter, as uh, we want to thank them and that crew they over there. For you know, again, you can't do it without the entire community behind it. We can't have the program that we need and want here in Hammond without, uh, you know, obviously Southeastern, but the entire community, the people, the businesses, the outpouring of support and the way they've embraced us. Uh, coming in is just uh, remarkable, and, and, I, and I really appreciate that. You, it's hard, you know, and I, and I know we didn't we didn't win the games and lose win and lose as many. The records doesn't is not indicative of what we want, and we're not satisfied with that. But at the same time, I don't think it's wavered the the uh, confidence that people have had 
uh, and have shown that when I go in a place to eat or Holly and I go in a place and eat and, oh, we just go somewhere and sit down and have, you know, ice cream at another place or just something that people don't come up and say hi and keep going. We appreciate y'all being here. We Welcome to the community. I can't tell you how many times that's taken place. And it's really it's neat to be back in South Louisiana at home because this is how the people are. It's not like this everywhere, I promise you. No doubt. I, t- I, I thought I got that vibe from your, from your coaching staff, you know, last week having a chance to spend a little time with those guys. But, you know, Hammond's a good place to live. And I think that uh, we, we can build something big here. Absolutely, we can, Alan, and we, and we do. And, and to build it, you got to have a foundation. You got to have a foundation that you got to start from, and you got to make that sure that that foundation is strong and can withstand uh, the test of time. And there's there's uh, blueprints out there. College football, there are programs that have been built throughout the years on a solid foundation. And what it takes to continue that for years and years and years of winning, whether I'm here or not, there's a there's a blueprint out there. It's just not. Uh, a fly-by-night deal so that when somebody wants to come in and build it for the future, there's a path to go by. If somebody wants to come in and do it right now and get out, there's a path to go by that. There's a way to build everything that you want to build. Somebody's already done it. We're not going to reinvent everything. But when you go out and you solicit opinions of people who have done it, who have been there, and, uh, you know, it's it's kind of neat to listen to them and how they, how they do it and what they do and what the priorities are and where you want to go, what your vision is. And my vision for this place is to win for a long, long time at a high level. Certainly like to hear that. As uh, Coach, we have a few questions coming here tonight. We want to thank everybody who's sending questions as the year went on. We, we have questions for Coach Selfo each and every week about this time on our program. Coach, this question comes in uh, that says, Coach, Jason Virgil has a chance to throw for 3,000 yards. Can you talk about what kind of year he's had? He's had a good year. Uh, you know, I, I think what's happened is that his – uh, decision making is getting better and better. He had some. Uh, he went through a period early in the season that he did a nice job taking care of the football, and then kind of got away from it. And sometimes that happens with a guy who hadn't played a lot of football, and he hadn't. So he's gotten away from it. And then now, what's what you see and happen now is that he's coming back to within himself to to say, I don't have to make these tight windows. I don't have to. You know, I don't have to do those things. I can just throw the football away. I think last week against McNeese, and we talked about it. Uh, he was 50% in the pass game, but about four of those or five of those were throwaways. So instead of making that bad decision and turning the football over, he just threw it away and we moved on and it ended up paying off dividends for us. So where he's going, uh, I think the sky's the limit for him. He's going to have an opportunity to continue to lead this football team. And then, uh, you know, especially for next season, you know, it's where we want to go. How good can he be? I think I he can be really good. good. You know, I mean, you know, it's hard to say what the ceiling is on a guy who hasn't been exposed to a lot of stuff. So, you know, if he was here for four years, I could tell you this is probably the next step. But I think Greg's done a good job with him. So I think the next step could really be a big step for him. And we'll have to see, you know, who knows. But uh, he's a guy who really wants to do well, and that's a big part of it. You know, when I was at Tulane, we had Sean King and Patrick Ramsey and J.P. Lossman and Lester Ricard, Lester Ricard from Amy. Well, when you look at those, especially the first three guys, those are first and first, two first-round picks and a second-round pick. And the one common denominator, now one was from Florida, one was from Ruston, Louisiana, one was from California. One was black, one was white, one was Hispanic. Two-parent family, two-parent family, single-parent family. Nothing in common except when it came time to practice and work hard. Those were the hardest working guys on the field. So there's a reason why they got to that point. You know, there were a reason why they were able to be as successful as they were. Nick Foles is another guy. So many different things could have happened in his life, but the one thing that he did have was a work ethic that was, you know, surpassed all the others on the football team. And people look at that. So from a leadership standpoint, your work ethic as a quarterback is so indicative of how your team's going to go. No doubt about that. All right, Coach, let's get to another question. Uh, I had a question here coming in that says, Coach, uh, is the Texas A&M transfer running back at Nichols the main man to stop in their offense? I guess they're talking about Kendall Bussey. Kendall Bussey, yeah, really good player. Dynamic, uh, explosive, has got a chance to hit the home run for him. So he's he's what's happened, uh, I think, for them, which allows – you spend so much time on him, which allows uh, the quarterback to be such a weapon. Because you have to spend so much time and dedicate – personnel to that guy that sometimes the one you have to leave available or free is the quarterback because the two receivers on the outside are also dangerous so you can't you can't just single cover those guys the entire time uh yeah he's he's a weapon 
He can take it the distance. He's got a chance to hit the home. You know, he can score from 80 yards out because he is that fast, and uh, that's a huge pickup for them this year. No doubt about it. Lions are going to take on Nickel State this Thursday night, right after the season, 6 o'clock kickoff for the Riverbell Classic. Final question that I had here for you tonight says, Coach, uh, how much have we improved since the first practice in August? Well, you, I mean, if, I think if you come to practice, you'll be able to see the transition time between each with uh, each period, uh, the the uh, how the plays are sent in, what we're able to do. The uh, uh, we've we've had fewer and fewer each week of uh, alignment penalties and things like that. So we're you can see the improvement taking place. But what you've also seen, which sometimes is hard for the naked eye to see, is that the improvement of each individual player. Philando Jordan uh, at the beginning of the season was competing for a job, and now he's probably our most solid cornerback there, you know, to tell you the truth. Uh, Braylon Thorns was not in the secondary because Matt Wright was back there, so Braylon's been back there the entire time, and look how he's blossomed as a player. You know, he's come along and done a good job. Isaac was another one and blew up over there. Nigel Jackson was a guy you just say, I don't know, where can he fit in, how can he fit in? He's had such big catches. So, well, I think we've progressed personally, individually, at all the positions. But I think as a team, I've seen the camaraderie and the guys policing themselves from the standpoint of this is who we are and this is where we want to go. Now here's the steps we have to take. We trip, we fall, those things do happen. But uh, I think what's happening is that we're taking some steps in the right direction. All right, Coach, as uh, Lions are going to play this weekend uh, – not this weekend, Thursday night, 6 o'clock kickoff at uh, in Thibodeau as they're going to take on uh, Nichols for the Riverbell Classic. As uh, we just have a couple of minutes to go here, Coach, give us your final thoughts, not only for the week but of the year as we go into the final game of the season against the Colonels. Well, uh, you know, the year hadn't gone like we wanted to. Uh, from a wins and losses standpoint, we did have – we see a lot of growth. We saw a lot of support from the community and uh, the administration. I think Dr. Crane and – J.R. Teagues has done a good job uh, uh, providing us with all the stuff we need for the building blocks for the future. And, and that, that is so much appreciative. Uh, when you look back at our summer school and funding summer school and having those things available for us, they did a good job of that and making sure we could get all our kids here. And we've seen growth uh, because of that. But when I look, for me, I'll, I'll, do most of the re- I'll do all the reflection after Thursday night. This is huge for us. Uh, we need to play well. Uh, we need to win this game, and uh, we need to take that that momentum of beating McNeese and Nichols over into recruiting. No doubt. And I'm not afraid to say that because that's what those are the facts. You know, uh, the coach speak is uh, I hope we play hard and I hope we do our best. And I hope well that's all uh, that's a crock because we need to win this game to help us out to go into recruiting and uh, get some players to help us build for the future because that's what we want to do. We want to take some of these kids that we got that's on the fence right now between us and Nichols and McNeese and maybe some other schools and get them over here on, on our campus and become part of a Lion Nation. And uh, at the end of the day, we're, they're telling us Lion up. Well, Coach, you're one in the book for our show. I appreciate it. I had a lot of fun with you, and I appreciate you being here each and every Monday night to fill us in on what's going on in your program. Good job. I really enjoyed it, Alan. No thank problem. So I want to thank everybody who came out here tonight. We also uh, got some thank yous I want to say. Uh, on-site engineers Dustin Arroyo and Jake Cooper have been with us all year long. Also, Colton Vickers has been here uh, streaming the broadcast on YouTube, also on the Facebook Live page as well. I want to thank Richie Clark, who comes from uh, North Shore Broadcasting every week. Kimber Chapel, uh, who didn't come tonight. Yeah, but, but he's but at the he, basketball game. Yeah. Hey, look, Gazzardo and that group, man, I'm so fired up. Uh, they got to pull this one out tonight. No doubt about it. We also always want to thank uh, KSOU, our flagship station, and all of our affiliates down the line. We want to thank uh, Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction for being our to- um, being our title sponsor, and yep. also Topla for being our host right here each and every week. 6 o'clock kickoff, bring your coat. It's going to be 39 degrees at kickoff as the Lions and the Colonels get after it uh, for the Riverbell Cat Classic, a 6 o'clock kickoff. 5.30 uh, on the air right here on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network pregame for Mark Willoughby, Robbie Rhodes, and myself. We'll bring you that broadcast if you can't make it down to Thibodeau. For the last time here in 2018, for Coach Frank Selfo, I'm Alan Waddell. We'll see you next time on Inside Southeastern Football with Frank Selfo presented by Louisiana First Choice Auto Auction and Topla on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. 